with me is community activist and a consultant with the Ministry of National Security. He has done a lot of work and said a lot of great things that bring clarity to what is going on on the streets. Let me welcome Hal Graves uh, with us this morning. Mr. Graves, good morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Good morning and good morning to all your listeners. It is great to have you, uh, and I also have with us uh, Rhoda Barath, uh, who is a lecturer and a teacher, and she is um, being she is also a political commentator and a blogger. So let me welcome Rhoda at the same time. Good morning to you, Rhoda. Good morning to you, Mr. Bishop. Good morning to Mr. Graves, and good morning to your listeners. Mr. Graves, you are on the street. You are seeing what's going on up there. Give us the 411 as to what is happening in Laventil. Before we get into some of the contributors to where we are, I just want to give folks a sense of what's going on on the streets. Could you do that for us? Right now, the mothers are still in pain. Um, it's difficult for them to recover. You're sending your children to school, and what has happened has crossed the lines of the madness that they were living in already. Mm -hmm. um, you have this ongoing war between gangs that are being called the Muslim fraction and the Rasta City fraction, mm -hmm. and the very names are misleading. Because you have gang leaders in the Muslim faction that are not Muslim. Mm -hmm. And you have no Rastafarians among the leadership of the Rasta city faction. So it's a confusing morass. Well, it's not really confusing. And, Basically, what you're saying to us is do not believe the hype of Muslim and Rasta just deal with criminality. That's what you're saying. Am I clear? We, we, we have to deal with criminality. Mm -hmm. And we have to deal with a community where people aren't getting access to services mainly because of that ongoing war mm. that is preventing young men from not only not going to school, but going to other kinds of training programs. Mm. So they can't get to the technology center. They can't get to the white up classes. They can't even get to the altar classes to learn to read. Um, one young man told me he was going to school up until Form 3. Mm -hmm. But when he got to the taxi stand at Form 3, people started shooting at him because of where he was from. Mm. The decision he faced wasn't a decision about whether to continue education. It was about whether to continue living. It is a tough decision that you have you, you, you have to make. So on the streets of Laventil this morning, you were saying that folks, are, are you seeing more folks willing to come out because of the, the whole we sense that it is safe? a lot of support. A lot of people are calling. Um, so a lot of people are calling in. Um, a lot of people are willing to cooperate, but they're doing so quietly for obvious reasons. Yes. Um, there are a lot of people that are hurt. Um, we have people calling Project Reason. And they're going to be coming to our prayer vigil, a candlelight vigil we're having tomorrow at the Lady of Fatima Church at 6 p.m. So the residents are coming out, they're calling. Um, even, well, with Project Reason, we work with the gangs to stop the retaliation. Mm -hmm. We are a unit in the Ministry of National Security mm -hmm. tasked with going after the actual alleged shooters. It's a project based on the cure violence model of intercepting and interceding in the gang violence using a public health approach. So you're looking at those who are infected, those who are at risk, and you're going to them with methods to bring them into holistic living. Hal Graves involved in, in, in the arts. You're having a, a real-life tragic <laughs> drama going on right now. He's a consultant with the Ministry of National Security and a community affairs activist. Before I bring in Ms. Barat to join us, I just want to go to something that you said that I think laid the foundation. And when I got in touch with uh, Rhoda, I asked her uh, about it, and she said, yes, that is exactly what he's saying is true. Let me let our listeners understand what you were saying as head of uh, Project Reason. You made the point that gang leaders are now the heroes in the eyes of many youth. You say they become cult heroes with Facebook pages and YouTube channels, and young people are turning uh, turning into into this lifestyle. Children from Barak, Posse, Poria, San Fernando, they all want to be part of this culture. It is a culture that says, I defy the odds, even though you put me away from school, I can still make myself to be in something. You continue uh, in, 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 in proffering that all over the country is now a lavender. Yeah, let me bring in Rhoda before you comment on that. Rhoda, is that an exaggeration? 
No, I don't think it's an exaggeration. I think what we have seen develop in this country mm -hmm. over however many decades is what Professor Gordon Rowley refers to as a culture of terminality. Mm. You are seeing whole communities where certainly young mm. males are seeing violence as empowerment, mm -hmm. right? And of course, yeah. it, this would be a response to feeling dispossessed. So the questions arise uh, that will arise are why, are why are young people feeling so dispossessed and how do we treat with this dispossession? And it has to be multi-pronged. It mm. cannot just be uh, patrols on, on streets. It has to be multi-pronged. You say, uh, Hal, let me bring you back in Hal Graves, because you're saying uh, almost the same thing that Rhoda is saying, but w in, in the short term, you said you're welcoming um, the, the, the soldiers and the police here, but the problem is way deeper. I get the feeling from my extrapolation of what you're saying is that there is a, a, a social contract that was broken between those governing and those governed. Um, it's a thing deeper than the social contract being broken. Lavantel feels alienated from the rest of Trinidad. Mm. You still see it in social media. They are community under siege. People are saying, let them kill each other out. Mm. Or Lavantel. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, there are almost and probably over 100,000 people living in that hotspot area that we have to deal with from Belmont to Mova. That's almost one-tenth of the population. Mm. They are not going to die out anytime soon. That's important for folks to understand. Don't wait until the, the, the absurdity of what was posted on Facebook, for instance, uh, they will kill each other, Rod, because this is a part of the fabric that is Trinidad and Tobago. Exactly. Mm. It is more than just a part of the fabric. It is the people of East Port of Spain in the Cambole riots. Mm -hmm. The same behavior that we're seeing and looking at, it is there that bursts the carnival. So they've given us a festival that identifies us. We celebrate and we even go to the greens to say thanks for the festival. But we say it to the open air, we don't say it to the people of Lavantel. We don't acknowledge their gifts. We enjoy the pan that they gave us, mm -hmm. but we don't tell them thanks. <laughs> you have never been thanked They've never been recognized. So many important people come from and still come from there. We read gang literature about L.A. and Chicago. But even the model that we're using with cure violence, we have to tweak it to deal with the Lavantil and the Lavantil type gang. Mm -hmm. Because these gangs are unique. They don't follow global patterns. They don't recruit children. Mm-hmm. Children in the community who have no fathers, who are unwanted, end up in the gangs. If you go to them and you say, I want to join the gang, they will shoot you. Mm, mm. So you can't do like North America and send in an undercover policeman and say, I come here to join the gang. That's a fantasy. Mm -hmm. That will work in another jurisdiction, not here. Mm. I know I'm the consultant to Project Reason, not the head. About Dr. Marlon and is the head. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm, because I am a public face and, and what I've done, um, people gravitate towards me and so. But we have a lot of work to do because it's not just government and success is government. But people don't come. Your family doesn't come to visit. I'm 20 years ago, mm -hmm. maybe. I'm but continuing as a the. Personal love until. You don't even have that blood and familiar contact with your own blood. It is that own blood that I want to deal with. Um, uh, Hal Graves also in the conversation yep. with us is Rhoda Barad. But before I go back to Rhoda Hal, you made a, a point, I think it was back in 2013, where you spoke to the issue as a, a part of what you say is the genesis of this problem, which is fathers not being fathers, fathers not even recognizing the importance of their role, fathers who can make a difference in these lives, unable to do so because their own concept of themselves are wanting. Speak to that, please. Fathers don't understand their role because they themselves were not fathered. I was responding to a murder two years ago, mm -hmm. and I went to the father of the dead young man and offered my condolences. And he asked me, Uncle Roy, why, why are you giving me condolences? Mm -hmm. I have 16 more sons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can't even address his own loss. Mm -hmm. 
And unfortunately for his living son, he said that in front of them. There is such a disconnect mm -hmm. because they don't know that they should be connected. Some young men came to me asking for classes. But to my shock, these were all of them under 23. Mm -hmm. And some of them had already, three children already. Good God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And none of them were taking care of their children. And when I started asking about it, they didn't know that they had the two. Yes, yes. And, and their response was, nobody took care of us. So the cycle, so the cycle continues, yes. Continues. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. mother is caught up in an economic cycle where she has five children, she has to make a living, she gets up in the morning, she has to go and hustle. Mm -hmm. So she says, listen, if you want to go to school, I'll go. Um, I have some bread there on the table, but I need to get something for you. Mm -hmm. And whether she has to go and find a man or to do a menial class, she has to leave them. It's a dependency syndrome that can only add more children to the equation sometimes. But you know what's interesting about that concept of dependency syndrome? You're not as willing to be dependent as we assume, you know. I have tried to get some of them food cards. And not one of them went to the office. Mm. In fact, it's something rude and they should look at. The welfare offices that deal with love and till, they are some of the smallest offices in the country. For its large population size, love and till does not drain our welfare coffers. Hal Graves is my guest this morning. Unless our folks misunderstand, we're not saying that this problem is only lab until we're looking at the flashpoint now. I want to make that very, very clear. And I want to uh, bring Rhoda in this conversation as you as you said she should be looking into this. Speak to that for me, please, Rhoda. The size of, of, of the body set up to assist folks in, in these situations. Well, I w I'm tempted to agree with Hal that um, the people that are draining the coffers in terms of welfare services aren't necessarily from, from Lavanti. Um, hmm. You find that when it comes to public funds being, um, being wasted, it's not necessarily in, in areas like social welfare. But one of the, one of the things that I wanted to, um, to talk about was mul the whole business of multi-pronged approaches, hmm. right? You had the Prime Minister having a press conference where he came across sounding very assertive, right? We're going to have these patrols and we're going to have these patrols in the communities. Mm -hmm. Then you had Minister of Legal Affairs, Stuart Young, talking, speaking alongside him about other initiatives, um, Stuart Young and, and um, the Na Minister of National Security. And there's a way in which, or, the, the, or rather, coming off of that press conference, I was, I was not utterly convinced, I was not entirely convinced mm -hmm. that we had... Um, a strategy to explain how we were going to better serve these communities because there are ways in which the things that Hal is saying and, and, and the um, events of the last couple of weeks are showing huge gaps in terms of community development mm. and com community empowerment. We have a ministry that deals deals with community. We also have a ministry that deals with social services and, and, and social welfare. So how are those two communities speaking to each other, to, uh, those two ministries, sorry, speaking to each other to mm. come forward with strategies? So I would love to hear strategies based on community development and social systems. Then I want to hear far much more, not about patrols per se, but about detection. Because mm. I think part of the problem, and, and I'm not talking about it as a lavender problem, because I don't see it as a lavender problem. I agree. I think right? we all agree. I on think that. it is a national problem, and I think one of the mm. problem, one of the issues with the national crime problem, is a policing problem. So when are we going to start seeing crime detection? Mm. 